Hey, thanks for stopping by the channel. You're watching Talking Pop Culture with Jake D. Your local theaters are in trouble. They're at great risk of closing their doors forever. But there is a solution to that. Before we get to it, though, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends on social media, and please do consider subscribing to the channel. It's one of the best ways to help a new creator like myself on YouTube reach a wider audience, and compete with the Netflixes and CBSs of the world. And now, on to the video. First, let's take a look at one of the articles that have been going around very recently in relation to the problems that theaters are experiencing. From CNBC, AMC warns it could run out of cash this year. Key points to the article, AMC's warned investors that it is in danger of running out of cash by early 2021. A bare movie calendar and continued lackluster attendance has left the business just hemorrhaging cash. The chain is exploring several ways of acquiring additional sources of liquidity and ways to increase attendance. And we get, you know, an image here of a bordered up AMC theater in New York City from September 4th. And it's one of many that are in this type of situation. Let's look a little bit deeper into the article here. AMC, the largest cinema chain in the U.S., has warned investors on Tuesday it's in danger of running out of cash by early 2021. Shares of the company tanked 7.8% on the same day, and their value today is $446 million, which is a 44% drop from where it was at the start of the year. In a public filing, the movie exhibitor said a bare movie slate and lackluster attendance has left its business hemorrhaging cash with little hope of recouping losses in the near future. Remember that, because that's what this video is truly about, how we can fix this problem. As of Friday, AMC said it's been able to open 494 of its 598 U.S. theaters, but only at a limited capacity of 20 to 40 percent. The remaining theaters, California, Maryland, New York, North Carolina, and Washington, are the ones that remain closed. Those theaters, although only around 17% of the company's total footprint, represented nearly a quarter of the company's total revenue last year. That's a sizable chunk of change, my friends. For now, there's only four major films left on the slate for the rest of the year. Universal's The Crude's A New Age, Disney's Free Guy, Paramount Pictures Coming to America 2, and Warner Brothers Wonder Woman 1984. I do have news on that since this article's been printed, Coming to America 2 has been sold to Amazon and is going straight to VOD and will no longer be entering theaters. Even those release dates could change. Oh, 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 what do you know? We've already got one of them. And I'd be surprised if we didn't see Free Guy and Wonder Woman 84 move as well. Over the past seven days, the U.S. has been adding some 50,000 new cases a day, blah, blah, blah. There's lots of people getting sick, right? And so it's causing some issues. There's fear in the community, and there's folks that just realistically and honestly, aren't interested in going back to the theaters right now. And it's causing a problem. When you don't have something to draw people there, then you end up with what we've got right now. AMC did say that it's in talks with local and state government officials from these states, but there's no clear timing for when these locations will be able to reopen. At the end of the day, if they can't be open and they don't have anything to show, there's going to be an issue. But again, keep this in mind because I have a proposal that can make this work. This is a big deal, and it comes right on the heels of Cineworld, the owner of Regal Cinemas in America, announcing that it's going to close, at least temporarily, the doors of every single Regal Cinema in the United States, which is the second largest movie theater chain in the entire country, and the largest in the UK, where it's also shutting its doors. Between Regal closing and AMC warning uh, just everybody that they can that there's a really, really serious crisis going on, how do we save the movie theaters? Well, I'm not one to argue for giant government bailouts, despite the fact that a big portion of the cause of this was the government closures to begin with. The fact of the matter is there's a raging coup going around and people reacted to it, governments, folks, whatever have you. In a lot of the country, however, things are getting under control, and it is absolutely safe to go back to the theaters. Myself, I've been seven, eight, nine times since theaters reopened here in Texas, and we can find a way to create a 
positive environment to let folks want to get back into that theater experience. Now, if I'm the studios, the major outlet for my revenue is the releases into the theater system. We've seen a few experiments already with VOD that have just been unsuccessful. You take a look at Mulan. It was so unsuccessful that Disney expanded its pay-per-view release beyond just Disney Plus, and you can now buy the movie on Amazon, Vudu, and other streaming services that offer video on demand purchases. So clearly, a singular service of video on demand, at least for larger movies, is just not going to be profitable. The theater system's got to remain intact and able to exhibit these big productions that are really meant to be seen on the big screen. In the meantime, though, the studios have seen the problems that the theaters have, and they've pulled back a lot of their releases. I was looking through an article that talked about the delayed releases between when all these restrictions began and today, and there was somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 movies, two-thirds of which I'd never heard of, that were experiencing delays of anywhere between 6 to 18 months from their original release dates. The fact of the matter is there's not going to be any big new movies in theaters in 2020 and quite possibly not until the summer of 2021. So what on earth do we do about it? We have two things really contributing to what's driving the movie theaters under right now. And if something doesn't change about that, most of your local theaters are going to be gone. Your big chains, their costs are very, very high. They're still having to pay their rent. They're still having to pay their utilities. In some cases, they're still paying a number of their employees, at least when it comes to benefits and things like that. So how do we solve this? You've got theaters that are largely empty because there's very little that's drawing people there, and you've got a populace that's somewhat afraid of going in. The biggest thing that we can do to help people get over the fear is to normalize the activity again. For the past seven, eight months or so, folks have grown accustomed to, to feeling a fear of being outside. If you take a look, though, at places that have reopened, for example, a local gym. On the day that they reopened, they weren't particularly busy. And restrictions remained roughly the same, but after they'd been open for a couple of months, pushing on three months, the place was relatively busy again in such a way that they're definitely cash flow positive and able to survive. So we need to create the same type of incentive to drive people into movie theaters in order to get them excited about going and back in the habit of visiting the local theaters again. So in the spirit of this, I would like to propose to the studios that they invest into those theaters that made their own industry of movie production strong and massively profitable over the past, oh gosh, I don't even know how many years. My first proposal as to how this is going to work out looks a lot like this image that you're seeing right here. The studios need to commit to a re-release of classic movies that people will still drive out to see. The first and best example with the most detail is Disney and Marvel need to go on a massive advertising campaign about resending the entire MCU slate into the theaters. If we take a look at how this breaks down, we can start with Iron Man on November 6th. Two weeks later, release The Incredible Hulk. Two weeks later, we release Iron Man 2. Two weeks later, Thor. You get the idea. By releasing an MCU movie every two weeks, beginning in the start of November on the first Friday, we end up with a slate of movies that don't conclude until the end of August next year, which is a great solution to the problem with the dearth of new movies right now. This becomes an event that people will want to go to and be comfortable with. Re-experience every MCU movie from the start, back in the theaters where you saw them to begin with. This doesn't work, though, if the studios don't make the commitment, because let's face it, the theaters are hurting right now. They don't have the kind of cash necessary to do the advertising push that a program like this would require. So it's got to be those companies like your Disney's, like your Universal's, these types of companies that put out a slate of movies like what I've got shown here in order to draw folks back in. I'll tell you what, I may not go see all of these movies again, but I sure would pop in to see quite a few of them myself, and that would recreate 
an event experience and get it back into the mind of the people. Now look, the first Iron Man movie dropping back in theaters, it's probably going to lose money in terms of the advertising campaign. The same is going to be true of The Incredible Hulk. Iron Man 2, probably also true. Perhaps even Thor. <clears throat> By the time you roll around to Captain America, though, and this is premiering in January, people have gotten back into the habit of getting back into the theaters. And I think from there on, perhaps with the exception of Thor The Dark World, you're going to begin to see a good cash flow coming in. And this is a positive thing for both the studios, who, to be fair, are hurting a fair bit as well, although they're in a better financial position than the theaters. And that, of course, is going to drive into the theaters earning their revenue again and being able to keep their doors open and continue to employ good folks out there like they've done for many, many years, including myself when I was in high school. So let's take a look at another option of what we can do in addition to just the MCU movies. It doesn't stop there, though. We need more participants. Enter Harry Potter. We're coming up on the 20-year anniversary of the original release of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, bringing these movies back into the theaters as well, and again, with a good advertising push. What a great way to draw folks in. And you, Harry Potter has kind of become something of a holiday season movie. So you start this one again right around Thanksgiving, run it through past the end of the new year. You know what? And let's not forget Lord of the Rings is as well coming upon its 20-year anniversary. Drop those extended edition Lord of the Rings movies right back into the theaters and once again advertise to people that it's time to re-experience that thing that we loved so very, very much. We can keep going, though. The original six Star Trek movies, from the motion picture all the way to the undiscovered country. These are a great set of movies that will drive folks back. It'll bring people back to the experience and the event. Now, do I think that what we should be doing is limited just to my favorite type of genre? Absolutely not. There's a slew of other classic movies that we should bring back in from a variety of different genres out there that are going to help bring people in as well. The Wizard of Oz. Hey, I don't know about you, but that's one I've never seen in theaters, and I think I would go. The Godfather Trilogy. It's a Wonderful Life. Citizen Kane. The Princess Bride. You get the idea. By the studios partnering with the theaters, we could see a real reversal of this just horrible misfortune that's undergone these particular industries right now. And it would be a way to truly drive folks back into the habit of seeing movies in the cinema, live and in person, with that, that movie theater popcorn, with that buttery substance that they put on it that tastes so good and gets your hands so greasy. Maybe, maybe one of those disgusting hot dogs or maybe you like to go to a place that serves you a real proper meal at your, at your seat. Because, you know, I sure do. Without a reason to go, though, the people are going to stay home. And without a theater to exhibit their movies in, the studio system is going to die. So if you're listening out there, Hollywood, I sure hope that you think about this. Because this type of concerted joint effort is the only way that you have an opportunity to save your industry. Well, if you've watched this long, I sure do appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video. Comment down below so we can have some conversation about this. Maybe you've got some other good ideas about other event movies that could go back into the cinema to help revive the industry. Share the video with your friends on social media. And don't forget to please consider subscribing to the channel. That's one of the best ways to help a new creator on YouTube like myself compete with your CBSs and your Netflixes of the world. Thank you again, and we'll catch you on the next video.